In this video, we're gonna show you how to build and install both the tail dragger configuration of the landing gear and also the tricycle configuration. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. Now for building the landing gear on the Tudor, you have two different options. You can either choose to have it be a tail dragger or you can have it to be a tricycle gear. Now my favorite personally is a tail dragger, especially coupled with our 4.3 inch wheels. It gives it a really cool bush fly in experience, plus it rolls over grass real easy. Now, if you're gonna do the tricycle gear, I strongly recommend using their 2.75 inch wheels. Definitely not the bigger ones that you see right here. Uh, first, let's go ahead and assemble our tail dragger configuration. We'll use the exact same landing gear for when we do the tricycle version. So we'll do this one first. The first pieces you wanna locate is gonna be your doubler here, one of our landing gear wires that are included in your kit, and also the plywood doubler that has the three sets of holes just like this. You can go ahead and put aside the other four remaining pieces of wood along with your two cheek supports right here and your three wheels. The first thing we're gonna do is bend our landing gear wire. We're gonna match the angle of our landing gear wire to the foam piece that we have in front of us. So the first thing we need to do is we need to measure our wire perfectly in half. It's 15 and a half inches, so seven and three quarters. And we're gonna grip the wire right in the middle with a nice heavy duty set of pliers Keeping your thumb really close to this, you don't want to push it out here or you'll get a round landing gear. Go ahead and rotate this as sharp as you can. Don't worry if you overbend a little bit because we can always open it up a little bit. We're just going to go ahead and look right here. Just need to open that up just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Our next step in bending the landing gear is to decide how much room we need for our axles here. So for this, I'm going to allow enough room for a wheel collar to be on the outer side, but then also the inner side. So I'm going to go ahead and measure, looks to be about an inch and a half. So we have our inch and a half here. We're going to grip this with this 90 degrees. Again, keeping my hand nice and close here. We're going to bend this to flat. And then we're going to do the exact same process now on the other side. Got an inch and a half. Grip it. Always make sure that your wire is perpendicular and then bend it in half. Once we have our three bends, we can take this right down to the table and we can see, do we have a little bit too much bend? In this case we do. And also, is it twisted? First, let's go ahead and get out the twist. All we simply need to do is rotate our axle until it lays flat on the table, just like that. Now we'll go ahead and rotate this up. You can see this side looks absolutely perfect, but this is just bent a little bit too sharp. I'm gonna come back here, I'm just gonna unbend it. And that looks fantastic. Now that we have our landing gear wire bent, let's go ahead and prep this foam piece that we have. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the foam that you have right in the middle here. Let's just go ahead and take our knife and we'll pop out the two holes. This is the exact same style build as we have in our simple cub and our scout, with the only difference is that we're putting a piece of wood in here. Now that we have the piece all weeded out, I'm gonna take the edge of my landing gear wire. I'm just gonna drag this through, giving me a nice even channel right through it. At this point, we wanna go ahead and do a test fit. So we're gonna lay this down right in there and pop it down in place. Once we're happy with that fit, we can carefully lift it up. Don't wanna open up that channel too much. We're gonna take our hot glue gun and lay a healthy bead right into that gap. There's gonna be a little bit of glue that squeezes out and that's okay. There we go. I'm gonna leave this fairly close to the top surface. I'm gonna just take a piece of scrap foam, just smear it off. Our next step is to take our wooden piece that we have here and you're gonna see three sets of holes. We're gonna lay this right down over the piece and you're gonna notice that the wire intersects with all three sets of those holes. Once you confirm that, Nice healthy bead, glue right down on this piece, get really excessive. Take my wooden piece, kind of wiggle it around, spread that glue out, push that down right over the wire, and set it in place. Once that glue is dried, let's go ahead and do a quick test fit here. We'll just fold this over 180 degrees, and you'll see that the other side matches up perfectly. Now that we're happy with the way that that looks and fits, same process as before. I always like to put my glue on the foam because it doesn't dry as quickly as when you put it on the wood. The wood will absorb that heat much quicker. Yeah. I'm just 
gonna use my scrap foam there. We're gonna press that down right in the place like that. Now that we have our doubler made, we need to go back now and we need to reinforce the three landing gear wires against the piece of wood. This is where you're gonna get all of your strength. That's gonna keep the wire from pushing against the foam and it's gonna allow the wood to even the pressure of landings over the whole entire fuselage. So next we're just gonna pass our zip ties right on through. I like to go through the bottom holes first. And then we'll just cinch that right in. There's one. There's two. And one last one here. Once all three zip ties are done, just come back with your cutters and cut them flush. All right, the last step to make this incredibly durable is we're gonna take our hot glue and we're gonna brush it right in on the sides here. All we simply need to do is put a little bit extra glue, and then use a piece of scrap foam like a paintbrush and brush that in. Same on the top and the sides. So the main landing gear is done. Let's go ahead and mount our wheels here. You can choose to lock this in with just a bead of hot glue on both sides, or you can just go to our store and get some wheel collars. And I'm gonna put the first wheel collar on. We use the bigger wheel collars. It works just fine with the smaller landing gear. That way one collar, wheel collar kind of works on everything. Slide this in. And there's two. Our main landing gear is all done. Let's go and grab our fuselage and install it. Now, depending on what configuration of landing gear you're choosing, whether it's tail dragger, tricycle gear, or even floats, you're going to be choosing which position to mount this with. Now, on the side of your fuselage, you're going to see two very light ticks here. Two dots here indicating that this is your main location for a tail dragger. A single dot here. And then finally, two little indents right here. And these two little indents indicate where you're gonna to wanna to cut out for your floats. And you can see, we already have that cut out. So our next step is to choose the main section. This is the one that's automatically by default open for you. And we're gonna slide this right in. Make sure that your landing gear is pointing towards the nose of the airplane and lines up directly over top of these two little hash marks. Now this is gonna be pretty tight here. So I'm just gonna kinda of squeeze this down just a little bit. I want this to be tight, but we don't wanna damage the fuselage. I'm gonna set this right upside down. And with a gentle rocking motion, I'm gonna rock this right into place. There we go. <laughs> now if you choose to go with tail dragger configuration, take one of your extra pieces of barbecue skewer, including your kit, cut it about a half of an inch from the back edge, and then glue that down on the very back of your tail right here. You can keep this piece on whether you're flying tricycle gear or tail dragger, it doesn't matter. This just gives you a little extra reinforcement and a little more durability. There we go. So as you can see, this configuration looks fantastic. It has that stall effect feel, and when you put the decals for your canopy on, it's gonna look incredible. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I'm gonna switch out to these 2.75 inch wheels on the main section of the landing gear, and then we're gonna show you how to do the tricycle configuration if you choose to. So first steps first here, let's go ahead and swap out our landing gear for our 2.75 inch wheels. And now we're gonna locate our main front landing gear support, the three pieces of wood, we'll talk about this in a moment, and also our two doublers right here. And along with that, of course, we need our landing gear wire. Now we're gonna bend this landing gear wire one step at a time. Feel free to follow along with me. It's just a series of 90 and 45 degree bends. And if you do it in this order, it's gonna work out just great. Our first bend is gonna be one half inch from the very top here. So I'm just gonna measure down one half inch. I'm gonna grip it with my heavy duty pliers here. We're gonna bend that 90 degrees, sharp as we can. 
Now after our first bend, our next bend is gonna be measured down two and three quarter inches. It's gonna be 45 degrees and it's gonna be laterally from our 90 degree bend. So I'm gonna just hold my hand here. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that this wire is basically pointing straight and lined flat. And I'm gonna bend that 45 degrees. While I'm gripping this, if you're using these heavy duty pliers, you're gonna notice it's about a half inch every time. So I'm just gonna hold on to that nice and tight. And that's gonna be about the perfect distance to bend straight down. So now we're gonna go ahead and bend straight down. Notice that I like to overbend sometimes and then I'll come back and I'll straighten it out and it'll give us a nice strong bend. At this point we're gonna take the table and you can see I'm not that straight, but that's okay. So we're gonna roll this around bend it back and forth until we get it to lay nice and flat. At this point, make sure that your first bend is pointing 90 degrees up from the table and that everything else lays nice and flat against the table. Our next bend is gonna be about 7 eighths of an inch to an inch. Grip it right there. And this bend is gonna go up parallel with the very first bend that you did, 90 degrees. Oftentimes, a lot of people concern themselves with getting everything just perfect. Oftentimes, you can get the general shape and then just go angle by angle and make sure it's nice and true. There we go. Our last bend is going to be a half of an inch from the edge, and that's going to be to form our wheel axle. So I'm going to measure this a half inch. Now we're going to bend this back, forming our wheel axle. So if this is going around your wheel and this is coming back, we're going to bend this back to form our axle get my stronger hand here. There we go. Let's give this a quick test fit to make sure we're happy with it. We should be able to slide on our 2.75 inch wheel and have that roll no problem at all. Final step is I'm going to grab one of our wheel collars here. If you don't want to use a wheel collar you can always use a piece of heat shrink tubing or a hot glue glob right at the very end. I've had enough wheels come off in midair where I have to go out and find them that I'm starting to use wheel collars more often. I'm gonna tighten that down. That looks good. And our last step is we're gonna cut it. Now, if something goes wrong with this wire, you should have just about enough access to give it another shot right here. So don't worry too much if something doesn't look quite right. So now that we have our nose gear, our next step here is we're going to assemble it into our firewall. The very first step we're going to do is we're going to press one of our two fittings that are identical right through the very back, just like you see here. Next we're going to take our landing gear wire, we're going to rock it through. Once we have it through the hole, we're going to slide on our next piece right through. Now if you bent this too long and it's too hard to bend this crooked and then slide it in, go ahead and just cut this a little bit short. Our next step is we're going to slide this down right over here nice and gently. I'm going to slide this down right through this hole, right on the very top keeper. And now I'm going to take my doubler and I'm going to slide it up here. So you can see that we have it captured. Once the upper and lower keys are in, we're going to lock it in with the final key that's going to come in from the back and key it all together. If you're happy with the way everything looks, we'll just take a bead of hot glue on the very back here and lay it down on top of each key. While that's drying, let's weed out the pieces of foam that we have. And this is gonna be very similar to our main landing gear piece, except it's gonna grab around both sides of the landing gear instead of from the bottom. So we'll weed that one out and we'll weed the second one out. Once we have those pieces weeded out, we can then come around and crush them down right over top, just like you see. Go ahead and glue our first piece down. Line this right up on the edge. one. And on the back edge, 
we're gonna need to push this down over and crush it down right over this key. This is gonna keep that key from backing out even if the glue ever comes loose and then give it a nice finished edge to insert into the fuselage. And let's do the same process now on the other side. Just gonna press that right over the foam, hold it in place. At this point, our nose gear is ready to be put in the airplane. To adjust the height of the nose gear, if it's up too high or down too low, you can grab your landing gear right at this point right here and twist it in or twist it out. Let's go ahead and install this in the FT Tutor. For this step, we're going to need to use our ruler. And I like to just find the little notches that we had. There's one, there's two, there's three, and then there's four. Once we find those dots and we made our marks, we can connect them with a ruler. I don't go all the way to the far edge because the landing gear is not going to protrude out that way. I'm just going to keep it about one width of foam from the inside. And then I'm just going to cut this out right here. One and two. And let's see how close I got. There we go, right over top of it. Perfect. Same process as before, we're gonna crush this down. If this ever gets too tight, you can always open up the hole just a little bit more. It's not a problem at all. And what we carefully wanna do is we wanna keep this bent all the way over. If this is simply too long here, you can always come back and cut it shorter. All right, let's carefully start from one end. We'll press down with a rocking motion. There's the one landing gear. Let's go ahead and install the back side. And same process as before. Cut this right over that dot. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different slots and holes. So this plane could be reconfigured and theoretically you could have every configuration uh, made for this. But your model is most likely only gonna have the two main slots and maybe this one exposed here. And same process as when we put it in the slot right here. We'll crush it down. It in. Rocking motion is all you need, and we're going to press it right through the fuselage sides. So now that we have our tricycle landing gear installed here, you're going to want to adjust your front nose so it's just barely up, just enough. Now this is going to be something that you're going to do right out the flying field just to make sure it takes off and lands properly for you. Right now I just have it a couple degrees up, and if you're doing the tricycle landing gear, you may want to shorten this so you can get full rotation when taking off. At this point, our tricycle landing gear is installed. We're ready to move on to the next step, which is installing our radios and our power pod.